Welcome everyone. Welcome to this eclipse season special that I am putting out for you guys. I hope it finds you well. And we're going to talk in this video about how these eclipses that are coming up um, in November and December of 2021 will be impacting you into 2022. Yeah, because these eclipses are pretty major, as are any. They impact over the next six months. So um, we are going to talk about how these energies are going to be felt well into uh, mid next year. And we're going to cover, you know, the lunar eclipse in Taurus coming up on the 19th of November. And then the solar eclipse in Sagittarius coming up on December 3rd. And um, I will hopefully have some people here that are viewing that will be kind enough to timestamp down below as I go through each of the signs. Uh, discussing how it is going to impact your sign. A reminder that, generally speaking, if you follow according to your rising sign, generally speaking, this will be most helpful for you. Yes, of course, you could look at your sun sign, your moon sign, but rising sign is probably your best bet. If you don't know what that is, go to a place like astro.com or Cafe Astrology or my personal favorite astromatrix.org and then you can find out or you can hire somebody like myself that can give you an accurate idea of where these eclipses are transiting specifically in your natal chart, okay? And I do want to say that, again, many of you already know the drill about general readings, right? But let me give you an example, okay? I'm a, an Aquarius Sun Taurus rising, so I'm going to watch the Taurus portion of this video. But because I know that the information for Taurus here is accurate concerning my lunar eclipse that is occurring in November, then yeah, I take that to heart. But the solar eclipse portion I know doesn't apply to me. It's the Gemini reading on the solar eclipse for December that is accurately depicting the transit, okay? So again, just an example of how if you want the most accurate read, you need to look at your natal chart to see where these energies are transiting through your specific chart or get somebody like myself uh, to look it up for you. And I will say very briefly that I am offering something for a very limited time, 20 minutes for $50, to see where these eclipses are hitting your houses. And yeah, I'll have card draws in there if time allows. Um, if you want more details on that, wait to the very end. Um, but yes, 20 minutes for $50 because I'm looking at two eclipses and how they're impacting you over the next six months. It is limited time offer because, right, I have limited availability. Um, I've actually priced these pretty affordably, and I will be working on annual readings next. So grab them while the grabbing's good. <laughs> okay, so before we get into the specifics on the signs with corresponding card draws, which I'm going to have here, right? Let me generally say, and this is super general, because hopefully I'll go live post-eclipse and just talk about how, as an empath, I'm experiencing and feeling these energies. Um, these energies have a six month impact. As I said before, we're gonna fill them well into mid 2022. They're very relevant, very relevant. And um, so, as I said before, the first one is a lunar eclipse in Taurus on November 19th, and then a solar eclipse uh, in Sagittarius on December 3rd. And this is not as important because, yeah, these are eclipses, but it's also important because it marks the end of the Gemini-Saturn eclipses that we've had over the last one and a half years. So for those of you who are needing a refresher, we started that eclipse cycle in 2020, June 5th to be exact, um, 2020. And the last Sagittarius eclipse we're going to have on December 3rd, as I've already said. Um, and this is while the North Node has been in Gemini and the South Node in Sagittarius, um, and those nodes shifted back in 2020 as well. So um, really important because we're looking at uh, an energy of people being very focused on what is going on locally 
and having to release things, maybe long distance travel, right? We've dealt with a lot of restrictions like that. And there's been more of a local focus, which is Gemini. Um, it's also been a focus on what are the facts versus having to release what you believe, okay? Uh, because maybe what you believe don't line up with the facts, okay? And I'm not talking about fact checkers, right? Because some of those fact checkers are out in La La Land, all right? It's about what, what's the reality here? What is the truth of the matter? And communications and talking and sharing um, knowledge versus faith, all right? So there's been this whole, over the last year and a half, um, energy, uh, energetic themes having to do with um, this embrace versus release. And with this eclipse cycle, we are making way for um, the next one and a half years of the nodes uh, shifting into this Taurus eclipse, a Taurus Scorpio eclipses um, that are just getting kick-started, you know, with this one that we're having uh, this month of November. So this eclipse cycle is going to last from November 19th of this year to October 28th. Of 2023 so the eclipses that we're having in November and December are occurring before the nodes shift which will be January 19th of 2022 so what we're experiencing these last two months of 2021 are giving us a taste of what's to come over the next one and a half years of the themes that are likely to arise during that time frame so pay attention these last two months of this year to the shift that is occurring from knowledge believing to money houses, values, okay? Um, yours versus mine, these type of dynamics, because that's what we're moving into over. It's, it's getting beyond this kind of intellectualizing or mental, almost mental type of energy that I think we saw in the last one and a half years. It's beyond that realm. It's like, where is, where's the tangible? What is solid here? And these last two months are definitely ushering that time in for us all right let's get on with the signs and we're going to start with taurus because <laughs> hey that taurus eclipse that's coming up this um friday well you know tauruses are going to really feel it they're really going to feel it in that first house and um definitely taurus risings okay so reminder definitely look at your rising sign um Yes, look at your sun, your man, but we're going to go in order of Taurus first, Aries last, okay? Taurus and Taurus rising, this lunar eclipse is occurring in your first house. And that's really, with this eclipse being in your sign, it is highlighting the impact to you. And so this is a new era of knowing yourself and your value. I think that it's very likely that you're going to go through a time of personal growth and it might be that you are shedding an old identity. And the cards that I'm getting for that is the void. Ooh. Yeah. The void. Patience. And resilience. Not a fan of that. I'm almost getting a like a ten of wands vibe off of that, unfortunately. And discernment. I just heard um, that you need to discern what responsibilities you're going to take on and bear at this time. Uh, some of you, I don't know why I just heard you might need to lay low. Okay. If you don't see your way out of this, right? Whatever this is. Um. If life is feeling like, where are we going with this? Where is this going? What is this about? Right? As a Taurus rising, I totally feel this, by the way. I'm like, what the heck is this? Am I supposed to work with this? Like, what, do, what am I supposed to do with this? I'm getting a feeling like with this lunar eclipse, I'm hearing something about lay low. Let it pass, okay? There's something with a lunar eclipse that you're having to let go of. And I think it might be burdens responsibilities um, maybe these were things that you took on in the past and you identified with this is my responsibility right I'm like having to retrain myself because my youngest child is now 16 she'll be 18 in like a year and a half 
and I'm having to like remind myself, okay, like you don't need to tend to these kids so much. <laughs> You know, the kids are practically grown, all right? But then it's kind of like an empty nester thing. Like, okay, well, now what? Now what? And I almost get this in-between type of feeling. Um, there's something that you, you need to discern, but I don't know why I'm being drawn to this again. Like, there's some kind of, of fog there. Um, and that head is, is so airy, so ego. Ego. Um, Definitely, um, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier about that eclipse uh, in your first house. In November, um, there will be a shedding of your old identity. And I don't know if you know where you're going from here. But I think over the next six months, that is going to get illuminated. Um, but until you get clear, lay low because I see this kind of a mental fog where you're not. It's, it's going to probably take six months for you to get fully clear, okay? Now, moving on to, um, well, let's talk about the solar eclipse in Sagittarius for Taurus uh, that's occurring in December, and I'm feeling this card here. Step out of your comfort zone and show the world the real you. Well, that's interesting. Um, with this solar eclipse, there could be something having to do with your beliefs about relating to other people, um, beliefs having to do with shared resources, um, beliefs on sexual matters, matters of intimacy. This, something is shifting and getting more enlightened during this time. I'm seeing that some of you are, I, I'm really getting more of a, um, more intimacy with others if that's what's really coming to me show the real you it's about being more authentic that's really what i'm getting for taurus risings all right let me move on to gemini gemini this uh, lunar eclipse in taurus in november is impacting your 12th house the solar eclipse in Sagittarius in December is impacting your seventh house. Now, the one in December in Sagittarius, it is opposing your sign. So, yeah, this is quite significant for you. And just a reminder that um, maybe some Taurus risings are over here listening to the Gemini reading like I am. <laughs> because for me... Um, this, this this one actually resonates as more accurate. In my natal chart, um, this is going to be going through my 7th house in December. So let's talk about that 12th house to start with. Um, the lunar eclipse is um, probably um, going to lend itself to um, mm, some isolation and having to release behaviors. Um, with self undoing and I'm getting with the cards that there's a, a matter of protection here. And so if you find yourself pulling back um, in November, probably why um, you are allowing, you're allowing something, the time and the space and the care that is needed. And I'm definitely getting that um, with this card as well at the foundation, uh, self love. Um, maybe you are pulling back and doing some reflection during this month of how could you make decisions that are more loving to you. And um, bringing about more, more peace in your life. And more balance. Okay. Now, in December, Gemini, with this impacting your seventh house, having to do with long-term committed partnerships and relationships, well, solar eclipses could really um, bring in new beginnings. And um, if not that, if you're not getting new beginnings, you know, having to do with partnerships such as marriage or business partnerships, well, I definitely see that there's going to be some raised awareness or consciousness or enlightenment over the next six months for you having to do with the way that you're partnering with people in life. And so 
It could be that during this time, your most important associations and partnerships become more valued or you start seeing them in a different light. Um, you, this might bring the next year and a half of you coming into, um, I should say six months of you um, having this really highlighted activity in your life around long-term committed partnerships. Maybe a new relationship, very important new relationship, somebody that's gonna be with you for a long time, but man, these cards are not wanting to come out. Please tell me about Gemini and the Sagittarius eclipse for them in December, Gemini. Okay, I'm feeling this one in the back. Woo! <laughs> I'm loving that. Let's see what this is about. Oh my gosh. All right, so um, a fiery climax approaches. Who? Well, you know, that's passion. Uh, could be for better or worse, right? Full moon in Aries. I don't know if that has anything to do with, oh, wow, when did we have a full moon in Aries? That was like in October 20th, all right? So something might be significant about that full moon in Aries that we encountered. And then you've got the energy is gaining momentum, okay? Things are going to speed up for you. Things are really going to start moving forward for you. I think in terms of partnerships, I really feel that this is a good omen in terms of you um, maybe finding a new partnership. And if you are not partnering with somebody new, um, I mean somebody for the long haul, okay? We're talking about somebody for the long haul, all right? If you're not doing that starting in December, well, it could be unfolding from that point forward. It's, it, it could unfold over the next six months. And, in, you know, if that's not happening over the next six months, like I said, there's some change in your awareness or consciousness and in how you regard these long-term relationships and commitments. So I'm excited for y'all, Gemini. Very excited. All right, let's move on to Cancer. Cancer, this is... Um, this lunar eclipse in uh, it, this lunar eclipse in Taurus is impacting your 11th house and um, so something is ending in terms of an, a dream or an aspiration that you've had um, it might come to completion and culmination like you you accomplished that and you're on to the next thing or it might be that, you know, you realize that's not really what you want and you decide you want something else, okay? Because you come to this, oh, wow, my gosh, so many cards. I'm going to take the one that just popped out and all those on the floor. I'm putting them back, okay? But let's look at the, all right. Well, there's a masculine energy here that's coming out and um, peace. So let me say 11th house um, might have to do with friend groups or social networking. It's a very other focused energy. For some of you, like on the love front, it might have to do with a soulmate. But again, soulmates aren't necessarily people that are lovers. I mean, they can be, but um, it could be family, friends. Uh, soulmates could be a number of things, but I see peace coming to um, a masculine energy. And um, so, even though it looks like you're releasing some kind of dream or vision or aspiration that you have had, um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It could mean that, you know, you, you're getting a higher view of your life, a higher vision for your life um, that makes way for you having a new dream, a new aspiration that is reaching and impacting others. Uh, I'm, I'm getting altruism is really what I'm feeling that maybe in the past you had some aspiration that was more, you know, I hate to say egoic, right? Like very self-focused. What am I going to get out of this? What's in this for me? But now the aspirations are becoming more altruistic in terms of how does this benefit everybody involved? It's, it's a very other focused energy. Um, pretty nice, actually, um, if you ask me, you know. Now, in December, the solar eclipse in Sagittarius is transiting your sixth house. So there could be some opportunity that emerges having to do with a job or some work you might do as a subordinate in a subordinate position, um, employment type of opportunity. 
Um, if not that, it might have to do with your health or just some kind of day-to-day -day activities. Um, and this opportunity is in some way going to um, give you a reward over the next six months of you trying to go the distance on whatever, whatever your dreams and aspirations are with your daily life. Now, we're getting, for that time frame, balanced spirituality with practicality. And yeah, Sagittarius is a very spiritual sign. I think the most spiritual of all three fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, right? Um, Sagittarius has a lot to do with the beliefs. But again, you put it in the sixth house, it's like, okay, so how do we bring this on the day-to-day -day and make it practical? How do we bring heaven down to earth? You know, that's really in the energy there. Oh, and you got this as well, I think. Yeah, Jim and I got this during the same time frame. Um, a fiery climax approaches full moon in Aries. So perhaps something around October 20th of this year is relevant. Um, and it's coming to culmination. It's coming to, it's like hitting a crescendo there. Um, I hate to use that word culmination though, because, you know, I usually would say that in terms of a lunar eclipse, but... I'm getting more of a, it's like a heightened awareness that you're coming to um, about, again, like I said, and some kind of new, new opportunity that's uh, helping you go the distance in your day-to-day -day life. All right, let's move on to Leo. Leo, this lunar eclipse in Taurus in November is impacting your 10th house. And that has a lot to do with your, your career, your life purpose, destiny, your status. So... Um, it could be that during this time, there's some kind of self-doubt that you have about your professional capabilities um, that are in some way getting illuminated um, confidence issues, which is like, no, not Leo, <laughs> not Leo, yes, uh, yes, Leo, I'm sorry to say that um, in some way this is, this is coming up and um, whatever weaknesses get illuminated during this time, whether they're real or imagined or perceived or projected by, I mean, it had just, have, <laughs> however it comes out, okay? Um, really look at how you can strengthen those weaknesses and transform them. Because I think that's just the higher way of, of dealing with this energy of like, oh no, not Leo, don't doubt yourself, right? It's, it's like the, um, the lion and the wizard of Oz needing courage. No! Not Leo. Okay, let's see. Let's see what the advice is for Leo during this time frame. What is the advice for Leo? It's not wanting to come out. I'm not feeling that in the back. Okay. Nothing will come of this situation. I've just heard fear not. Fear not. Okay, and there we go. A fiery climax approaches. While wow. you're now the third one who's gotten this. Gemini got it. Cancer got it. Um, that's really interesting. So, I'm getting this energy with these cards of a lot of steam getting blown. A lot of steam getting blown for a bunch of nothing. Okay? It might look like something but then you might have some exaggerated fears about the direction this is gonna go in. Now, in December, with that solar eclipse in Sagittarius, that's hitting your fifth house having to do with fun dating, romance, children, and it could be that during this time, something about the way you express yourself, it just takes on a new tone. It's almost like you begin possessing more of the voice of a guru. <laughs> could you? Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, that's personally what I'm getting at. Let me see what the cards say for Leo and the solar eclipse in December. Ah. Ah. Oh, I like this. This is at the foundation. There's going to be a new beginning for you. Absolutely. It's unfolding over the next six months. Something unexpected. Oh. Oh, wow, 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 wow. But you're gonna have to surrender to it. I'm here, you're gonna have to allow, you're gonna have to open up. And I heard again, fear not. 
This is over a two month time frame, especially for Leo. Fear not. I've heard it for November and December for y'all. Fear not. Fear not. Somebody, some Leo out there, Leo Rising needs to hear this. Fear not. Okay. It just keeps coming up. Fear not. All right, let's move on to Virgo. And Virgo, this is impacting uh, your ninth house. The lunar eclipse of November in Taurus is impacting your ninth house. So um, during this time, it's quite possible, you know, with ninth house having to do with beliefs, that you're having to release an old belief, perhaps an old comfort zone, something that is a philosophical comfort zone or a physical comfort zone. Uh, sometimes ninth house has to do with education, higher education. Um, gurus, mentors, long distance travel, and so for some of you, you know, if you're stu a student, um, maybe you're finishing up school, or maybe you're deciding, you know what, it's too crazy up there with all these mandates, I'm going to sit this semester out, or the next semester out, you know, take a semester off, something like that, um, Others of you, um, there's an issue with travel, long distance travel, that you're having to release something having to do with that. And then, like I said, for others of you, this is more philosophical and having to do with beliefs that are being revamped, renewed. Somebody maybe who you believed in or who mentored you, that might be, that person might be leaving your life. Um, let's see what the cards have to say, Virgo. Virgo, Virgo, please tell me for... There it is. Woo! Extremes. And it came up. Y'all didn't see it, but it fell out into my lap and it fell out upside down. All right. Are you having to surrender extremes and having to accept something? This is a really passionate energy here. Okay, really fiery energy. And I don't know why, but a lot of the signs have been getting this. Like, I've been seeing that kind of, right? I, that, it came up in a different card, but I kept, I keep seeing this. Like, this is a um, very fiery energy. Um, and even all the red in this card is like passion, whether we're talking about sexual passion or physical aggression, that type of thing. There's something having to do with extremes, but with it showing up and with it falling out in the reverse for me, uh, are you having to release this going to extremes and accept something? I think that sometimes um, Virgos struggle with the, the imperfection of the world. You know, they struggle to accept those things. So, and we are definitely in the world at a time of extremes right now. <laughs> Probably talk about that, that the world events and stuff and, and how it fits into this astrology. I'll put that out in a different broadcast. Um, but getting back to you on a more personal level, well in December, uh, the solar eclipse in Sagittarius is impacting your fourth house of home, family, sense of belonging. Actually, I think pretty positive um, in terms of you uh, reassessing where you belong and how family has maybe shaped your condition, your current condition and your conditioning. That came out in the reverse too, okay? Hold your vision and step out of your comfort zone. Well, I, listen, I'm getting, this is another synchronicity that I'm seeing with the signs is this about getting out of your comfort zone, okay? And actually, I said this to you earlier, when we talked about um, the eclipse in November, that that could be about you getting out of your comfort zone. But now I'm getting the same message again in the cards this time. It was the astrology in November, but now the cards in December saying, get out of your comfort zone. So I'm going to say this. I'm seeing a theme here, right? That the last two months of this year, some of you leaving a comfort zone. Physically and or philosophically, you're reassessing where you belong. But with this hold your vision in reverse, it's almost like 
have you lost your vision? Like you don't see it anymore in terms of, or what used to make you comfortable no longer makes you comfortable. You don't see the world in the same way. You don't see comfort in the same way. That's unfolding over the next six months for you. All right, let's get on to Libra. Libra, the, the lunar eclipse in Taurus this November is impacting your eighth house. And that has to do with shared resources, other people's money, um, all things that are really private. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Intimacy, sex, death, taxes, anything that you know you don't, that basically you have behind closed doors. You don't put it all out there in the open for everybody because it's really deeply private stuff. Okay, that's the eighth house. And you're having to let go of something in regards to these relationships with yourself and others. And it might be letting go of when lose dynamics and relationships or the imbalances that are shared. The imbalances that you have had involving shared resources. That's getting illuminated during this time. Somebody here with this void card, I think somebody is coming up empty handed in a relationships. And I guess, you know, it would be different for different people, but it could be you, it could be the other person, but somebody's definitely not getting what they need out of the exchange. And this unequal exchange, this imbalance is highlighting a need for boundaries. I feel like I'm really getting a heavy energy with that Libra that um, I'm getting like some kind of sober realization like uh, what you don't have but you need or what they don't have that they need is illuminating a need for better boundaries in relating to others and not allowing for exploitation. Now, in December, when we have the solar eclipse in your third house, well, it's in Sagittarius transiting your third house. Third house has a lot to do with, there we go, other people's, Third house has a lot to do with like siblings, neighbors, communications, what you know. <laughs> um, so you could be finding a new way to present yourself to the world. And it might be that you are deciding that you're going to change the way that you're promoting yourself or the way that you're branding yourself. It could also just simply be the way that you talk to yourself. You're changing your self-talk. This card is saying conclusions are within reach. Full moon eclipse. Conclusions are within reach. And a fiery climax approaches. I'm telling you, this card wants to come out. It just it just keeps coming out. So I don't know again if something about October 20th when we had that last. Full moon in Aries is relevant in some way, but I'm also getting that there's, this is a really fiery ending, okay? And it's, it's interesting to me that that comes up when we're talking about the solar eclipse because usually I would associate that with some heightened awareness or awakening or enlightenment that comes in over the next six months, but it's almost like what I'm really seeing, honestly, it feels like a lot of ending energy when you should be having a new beginning. And, and what I, I'm being told uh, intuitively is that this new beginning with the solar eclipse in December for you is very much tied in to whatever ended in the October, November timeframe. 
those endings are making way for new beginnings, okay? And again, if you're watching this and you're like, oh, well, I don't know what that is, <coughs> excuse me. Well, it's unfolding over the next six months. You'll know by the end of the six months what, the, what I'm talking about. Mark my, my words. If you come back and you watch this video six months from now, you'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, that, that's what she was talking about. But, like I said, it's likely having to do with eighth, third house matters. All right. Let's get on to talking about Scorpio. And uh, happy birthday, Scorpios. I don't know if I've said it enough this month, but happy birthday to y'all. And we're getting into Sagittarius season, so they're up next, right? But Scorpio, this lunar eclipse in Taurus is impacting your seventh house, which Taurus opposes your sign. So definitely there could be like a heightened awareness of this energy more so than average okay and seventh house has to do with these long-term committed partnerships could be marriage could be business partnerships but with this being a lunar eclipse it's almost like you're having to release some tension that you're experiencing in close relationships the tension might have to do with codependence or extreme hyper independence Whichever extreme it's at, it's blocking your fulfillment in these relationships. So just be aware of what's coming up in November in terms of your close relationships, whether it's marriage, business partnerships, your commitments. Ah, look at this. Purity. Look at that. White as snow. Pure. Purity. Undefiled, right? But her face is blocked something that she's not seeing here is there something that you're not seeing Scorpio at the foundation it has to do with abundance Wow what what a contrast you know this is this is a kind of a death cycle winter you know and you're not seeing how to create some kind of manifestation in your life where things thrive and they grow. This is about the fulfillment, but it's almost like you're at this place. You're trying to get over here, but you're over here. This is really what I'm intuitively getting out of this. I, I feel like I got into some Scorpio deep shit over there. <laughs> I'm trying to move on. Oh my God. You want me to go deeper? You get a private reading. I'll talk about it at the end. Okay. Let's talk about this um, eclipse. Yeah. Cause I mean, I could go way Scorpio deep on those cards. I'm seeing some stuff there. I'm just like, come on now. <laughs> oh wow. Oh wow. Okay. Just keep going, Stephanie. Keep going. <laughs> so let's talk about the um, solar eclipse in Sagittarius occurring in December. It is transiting your second house having to do with your personal values, your possessions, um, could be your personal income. Uh, I, I like, you know, I like the solar energy here because um, it could be that you're realizing during this time of December that you, you are having, you need to be more practical in spending your money or how you are generating sources of revenue. Um, there's something more practical in your spending or more conscious about your consumerism and you start realizing over the next six months that you you want to start buying what reflects your beliefs you know i mean i see people do this stuff all the time like they'll they'll talk bad about the you know well i should let's say they talk good about eating health food but then they eat bad you know or they'll say don't buy cheap shit from china you know but then they shop at walmart you know so again this is you know putting your money where your mouth is you know and um for others of you, I, I just think um, I'm also getting like this could be over the next six months. Your awareness is raised to how you cannot just um, be more practical and you know frugal and less wasteful with your money, but it's about increase, increase. How do you create more of that? Okay, let me see. That came flying out. Um, what do you need to release? 
interesting. What do you need to release? And adjustments are required. So, um, <laughs> there's that darn thing again. This one always wants to pop out for us. I, it, this is this is like the theme. I'm, I'm getting this as the theme for everybody. <laughs> okay, these last two months, all signs. A fiery climax approaches. Full moon in Aries. Oof, going all the way back to October 20th. It's gonna be it's gonna be wild, is what I'm getting from that. Okay, but back to you, more specifically, Scorpio and Scorpio risings. I'm seeing in December. You gotta let go and uh, and adjust to something, okay? And this has to do with you know your personal values, your um, your possessions, maybe a, a source of income is not getting you there, or the way you go about generating revenue, it just is not there. You gotta release it. You're gonna have to let it go. Um, but I see it with it being a solar eclipse. There's there's something really positive. Like it comes in through a realization and awareness. All right, let's move on to Sagittarius. And Sagittarius, this lunar eclipse in Taurus, is um, impacting your sixth house in November. And sixth house has to do with your life on the day to day and might have to do with a job, might have to do with your health, your habits, your routines. But I think it is bringing about a shift in what you value on the day to day. And yeah, perhaps there might be a change with your employment or some work that you do as a subordinate or in a, in the capacity of being subordinate to others there's some kind of change it could be a you know your work schedule changes something like that something simple like that um, but also some of you if this is health related you're having to release maybe make some changes in how you um, take care of your health on the day-to-day -day, like with eating habits perfect time to do it as we're getting into the new year right so let's see what the cards say about this for Sagittarius in November. And um, while well, I've been shuffling and I'm going to take this one and this one. <gasps> okay. So at the foundation, you have a time for healing and a new romantic cycle begins. It's kind of interesting uh, because I'm like, well, you know, this, how does this factor in with um, sixth house? Well, this might be if you're in a romantic relationship, um, maybe something changes in the way you see that person like on the day to day. Who knows? You, you could be, you know, getting together with them, uh, maybe less, maybe more. Something is changing. Okay. All right, and for, okay, that's, that's interesting. Okay, so let's talk about what's happening for you in December when this hits your first house. And, you know, having an eclipse in your sign is really gonna highlight the impact for you. Um, it's going to affect the way that you see yourself and the way that others see you and yeah, hopefully, I think in a less limiting light, in a new light, and something seems to be coming to fruition here in terms of that. Um, but this wisdom card came in reverse, okay? So, somebody, I think, has had a lot of ideas about what they want to manifest or generate, or at least you're coming into an awareness of that over the next six months. But with this in reverse, I think that, that there's a realization of, you know, how do I apply the truth of these matters into everyday life? Because that's wisdom. Having the ability to apply truth into everyday life, that's wisdom. Um, 
And so I think that there's a lot of ideas going around in your head or you're being shown that over the next six months. But I'm getting that the challenge here over the next six months is, okay, so how do I make this happen for me? And some of you, it could be that you don't see yourself as very wise or other people don't feel like you've done some things that are quite wise, okay? And there's an opportunity to, to transform that in a positive way. Okay, let's move on to Capricorn. And uh, Capricorn... This lunar eclipse in Taurus in November is impacting your fifth house of fun dating romance, children, creative projects. So yeah, there might be some impact um, to your dating life or if you have children, you know, them or business ventures. Um, there's basically some kind of old way of creating or engaging your passions um, that you're maybe letting go of and releasing but that release is in some way over the next six months making way for something that is perhaps less traditional but more profitable. I mean, like some of you might decide, um, like if this is in a business capacity, you might decide, well, I'm going to put my creative passions online. I'm going to be a solopreneur. I'm going to launch something online and you're going to start creating your work, right? This would be tra less traditional ways of working um, but maybe more profitable given the economy and what's going on in this new world order. <laughs> uh, um, so this, the old way is, is falling off and it's making way for something new. Now, if this has to do with um, dating, you know, I'm sorry to say something maybe with your dating life is, is leaving, right? The way that you date. Or are you dating? Something is out the door with that. Children, uh, maybe something is really shifting in terms of your relationship with your children and having to release that. There's definitely going to be, you know, a new way made for the way that you relate to these fifth house matters. So let's see what the cards have to say for Capricorn in November. All right, that wants to come out. Beauty. Ooh. I'm really getting this vibe about you creating stuff that's beautiful. Like, I don't know if some of you are into art or, you know, if even if you're like a very, like an accountant type of person, um, you are getting into marketing your services in a way that is just very aesthetically appealing. There's something, um, you're beautifying something. You are adorning something okay this is a nice little energy here and gratitude this is what i have at the foundation for you in november um i'm getting thanksgiving something about thanksgiving time uh is is relevant um some of you uh beautifying things or realizing you know and i gotta say this like Sometimes Capricorns, uh, particularly, no offense, Capricorn males are, um, can be very, uh, practical to a fault where, you know, this gets sacrificed. Right. Um, and they're not looking at, they're, they're looking at the efficiency of something or the cost effectiveness of something but they're not looking at the beauty of it. And, you know, sometimes you pay a little bit more to have more beautiful things. Um, I, there's something there's something maybe that's getting illuminated about that, the need for beauty and the value of beauty in your life and how you show gratitude for things by beautifying. Okay, well, that just fell out for December. And I'm gonna say for December, um, Capricorn, uh, you have the solar eclipse in Sagittarius transiting your 12th house, very spiritual house, um, having to do also with the subconscious, the dream world, um, can be hidden enemies, can be self-sabotage, can be healing, isolation. But I'm going to say for you, I mean, with this being a solar eclipse in the 12th house for you, I, I really think that there's going to be a heightened awareness of the 5D. 
And so you could become a lot more intuitive during this time, a lot more in tune with dreams and your intuition. And it could be over the next six months where you're opening up more to growing um, on a spiritual level. So I'm actually digging this for you, Capricorn. I really am. So what came out is for you during December is expect powerful change. And a time to give rather than take. Oh, wow. And we saw that for November with the gratitude card. There's, there's something, there's a theme of giving for you, Capricorn. There's a theme of giving and being generous. At the foundation, you've got prosperity lies ahead. Holy crap, that's really good. I'm seeing this for the next six months, okay? And that ties into the new moon in Taurus. So again, I'm pulling this over, you know, the solar eclipse in uh, Sagittarius in December for you. But with that new moon in Taurus card, I'm being brought back to the previous month with this lunar eclipse in Taurus in November. So, look, all of this is telling me that I'm hearing blessed to be a blessing blessed to be a blessing capricorn that's the theme for you for the last two months of this year blessed to be a blessing it's potent it's powerful i'm i'm kind of envious okay i want to claim the uh capricorn reading for myself <laughs> if i may <laughs> okay well we're gonna get on to um aquarius and we'll see what um what we get for aquarius all right and i am aquarius sun here so uh, i got like three aquarius placements so i'll claim it especially this good I will. Okay, so Aquarius, this uh, lunar eclipse in Taurus in November is impacting your fourth house of home, family, sense of belonging. Um, and it is really potent because Uranus, which is the planetary ruler of Aquarius, is, you know, joining in in this fourth house placement during this time frame. So um, there could be some radical shifts happening with your home life. And if you're like me, and I've been trying to move for 30 years and stuck like Chuck, bring it on, universe. Let's have it. I don't know. It could be ending up at a homeless shelter, but <laughs> desperate times call for desperate measures. Okay. Um, there's something unsettling here um, that gets settled, though, on the positive. I'm going to say this. Um, whatever was hidden... And it, it might not be a physical moving of a house. For some of you, it may be. But for others of you, it's just like home, family, sense of belonging type issues. Might, might have to do with mothering. Um, but whatever is hidden, is, is it gets revealed during this time. And, and what gets revealed might change your perspective on a situation that, you know, on the home front was unsettling. And somehow you get resolution, you get... You get this to settle. So let's see what the cards have to say about Aquarius. All right. I don't know what it is today, but they're all just going on the floor and they're making me work. Okay. Ooh, the unexpected. I told you. I told you Uranus, our planetary ruler, is going to be right there alongside this eclipse in the fourth house. And at the foundation self-reflection something is making you have to look at yourself okay something is making you have to look at yourself i'm seeing three women here i'm also seeing one woman looking at two women one woman has her back to another woman two of them are facing each other so this might be a family dynamic it might be between sisters or a mother and daughter I told you there's some kind of maternal dynamic here with this being fourth house or a very feminine nurturing dynamic gosh that's that's deep like I, I want to go deeper into that I really want to go like what is the unexpected oh my gosh what is it? okay let's see for the solar eclipse in Sagittarius in December, which is transiting our 11th house. This could bring about um, a need for you. You, you come to this realization um, that you need to find your own tribe. Big surprise. It's like my mission in life. 
as an Aquarian, right? We're the friends of the Zodiac. We're the social networkers, yet at the same time, oddly, we're the aliens. Like, we can be friends with everybody, but then we feel like nobody's really our friend. Nobody really, like, we understand people, but do they understand us? These are Aquarian problems I know too well. So, you come back to this awareness of, I need to find my own tribe, and I need to find a new way of, of pursuing this. Because maybe the way you're going about meeting like-minded people, it's just not working. It's not connecting you to your people. So, um, well, I'm seeing here emotions are running high, okay? And you're very close to achieving your goal. Ooh. I'll take that. Can I take that to the bank? I need that right there. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm getting something intuitively like, um, ooh, oh gosh. So, I'm getting a couple things. First off, I'm getting this download that just when you're at your breaking point, that's right before you get your breakthrough, okay? And I'm being reminded of transition and childbirth. Anybody who's gone through childbirth and is educated on childbirth, they know that right before you start pushing that baby out, you reach your breaking point like, I don't know if I can do this, right? Me personally, when I went through transition, I just like, let's get this over with. Let's get this baby out. Urgh! You know, like tribal. <laughs> I even let out a freakish tribal yell to push the baby out, you know? And, and so some of you, I'm just saying like, you know what? When you feel like you're at your last, just like, oh, I don't know where this is coming from. But it's coming so take it if it applies i hope it helps somebody um all right let's move on to pisces and pisces this is going to be impacting your third house in november this this lunar eclipse is impacting your third house having to do with siblings neighbors um your local community communications um, be aware during this time that there could be some miscommunications and misunderstandings that come up to illuminate, to reveal to you better ways of communicating so that you're better understood by others. I'm, I'm hearing a breakdown of communications. Yeah. And I'm getting discernment here and will. So I, I'm getting that there, this, it, it's, it might be something that you're actually doing in your local community or having to do with siblings, neighbors, um, but it's almost like you're being misunderstood in what you're doing. And um, maybe it wasn't anything that you said, it, maybe you didn't say. Or maybe you, again, you said it, but did you, did you, it's something's not clear, look at the, brain fog in that okay so there's a near, need to have a, a more clarity of thought more clarity of communications um about what you're doing and how you're asserting yourself and so whatever you know whatever comes up around this time maybe ask yourself how, how can i communicate or express myself a little bit better because I think that's what's really being brought to the table here. Now, in December, with the solar eclipse in Sagittarius, this is impacting your 10th house. So I think there will be some kind of new opportunity that emerges to reshape your status, your career, and your legacy. But I think it's going to come with challenges. And you're going to have to ask yourself, you know, do I want to put the work in for this? How important is this to me? Because... You got a new opportunity here coming up over the next six months to really, I think, improve um, your status and your career. But are you are you willing to pay the price for it? Because it's I don't think it's going to come for free. And I think you're going to realize that as time goes on, uh, confidence is your key to success. Is the advice that I'm getting and oh, a new romantic cycle begins. 
For some of you, this new status has to do with marriage. Yeah. Marital status. And, but right, that takes work. I mean, yeah, if people want to be in relationships, but relationships are work now, aren't they? <laughs> so how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it, Pisces? <laughs> oh God, I gotta take my own advice. I've got so many Pisces placements. I got more Pisces placements than anything else. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, let's move on. Um, let's wrap it up with Aries. Aries rising, okay? And Aries, this lunar eclipse in Taurus in November is impacting your second house of self-worth, possessions, values, personal income. Um, so there's something that you're having to release. Maybe what you value, you no longer do. You realize, you know what? I don't value that anymore. And you're, you're letting go of it. Um, for others of you, this is more on the financial front that you are releasing a way of earning income or you're releasing um, a way of spending money, becoming maybe more of a conscious spender, a conscious consumer. Let's see what the cards have to say. Watch out during this time for a lowered sense of self-worth. Like if you feel like people are not adding value to your life, um, really tune into that, okay? Because I, I feel like it's illuminating to you what you value. If you feel like people are not valuing you, it's like, okay, what is it that you that you need in order to feel, I'm hearing worthy, worthwhile. Okay, that just got out. Oh man, self-love for an Aries reading? Come on, y'all wrote the book on this. No way, no way. What is this? Okay, that was in the reverse, the abundance. Like, are you not feeling abundant, Aries? If during this month you are not feeling abundant, how do you put that value back into you? How do you align yourself with people who put that value into you? They pour value into you. They value you. They see your value. They see your worth. I, I'm getting some vibe. Like some of you feel like your well has run dry. Okay. And I'm hearing replenish. It's time to replenish. Now in December, you got a solar eclipse in Sagittarius. Woo. Expect a powerful change. New moon eclipse. Look at that. Amazing. And so for this to impact your ninth house in December, this is ninth house has to do with beliefs, higher learning. Um, this could bring some kind of existential awakening, right? Looking at what is the meaning of life. You come to this raised consciousness, this raised awareness. And I think it brings about some kind of philosophical shakeup. And again, this is over the next six months, but it gets kickstarted in December for you. Some of you, it is a new beginning with your beliefs, your faith, um, maybe taking on a, a, you know, a course of study um, in academia, some of you um, deciding to, to get engaged in more travel, all right? Long distance travel. And at the foundation, take time to breathe out. So I'm, I'm also with a ninth house getting some kind of guru vibe like meditation. Um, I'm getting that. December is going to be a good month for you handling these powerful changes and these shakeups with meditation. It could be over the next six months. You learn meditation. You start practicing meditation uh, more as a way of dealing with things that are changing in your beliefs and in your values. 
Mm. Okay, so if you've made it to the end, uh, it's because you want to know more about the private readings that I offer to go in a lot more detail that's specific to your natal chart. Because like I said from the beginning, this is a general reading and the best way for you to know exactly more accurately how these energies impact your chart, you can look yourself or you can get a private reading. And so for a limited time, I am offering 20 minutes for $50 because this is a six month impact where we look at how these eclipses are uniquely hitting your houses. And I will do card draws with tarot and Oracle as you know, time allows and spirit leads. Um, and I will say, you know, recently I ran a special like this um, for the Mars transit that we're coming out of in December and you know, if it turns out that you are like one client of mine who had so much activity lit up in Mars, Pluto, Aries, Scorpio, that was, you know, pertaining to that reading, well, I gave her a lot more time and I just gave it to her because I could see she was going through a lot. And so, I mean, some of you, you are going to be going through a lot of things, but you need somebody who's able to really look at the chart and see not only... Uh, how these energies are hitting the houses, but the aspects they're making. For some of you, the impact is not going to be as hard as others. But if you're like this client of mine where I see so much activity lit up around this specific transit, well, I'm going to give you more time because my goal is to help people. And so if you are interested in this, 20 minutes for $50, and um, it, it's a limited time offer, like I said, because, you know, pretty soon I'm going to be moving on to offering readings at a higher price point for the annual readings, right? Because this one that I'm offering you is for six months, but pretty soon I'll be offering 12 months for the entire year at a higher price point, okay? So if you want to get in at this lower price point for a limited time, limited availability, the time is now, reach out to me at crownedones.weebly.com. Link will be down below. I'll pin it in the comments, okay? I'll put it in the comments that I pinned at the top, and so you can just click on over there and um, sign up for a reading, and I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.